Hmm. What's this? A Disney villain character review based around me. Hmm. How interesting. How delightful. <laughs> Hello YouTube, Film Buff 6 here, and in this video, I'm just going back to doing my Disney Villain Character Review series by reviewing a character that I've realised I've been itching to talk about ever since I did one of my first reviews slash rants on the channel, which was a review of the Zoltan Korda adaptation of The Jungle Book from 1942, if you may remember. God, I hated that adaptation, by the way. Um, anyway, of course I'm going to be talking about the Lord of the Jungle himself, the tiger who would stop at absolutely nothing to kill one certain man-cub, and the Scar, um, a villain that has, that has quite surprisingly been quite overlooked, um, been quite overlooked in been quite overlooked in recent years, probably due to the amount of screen time that he has that he has in the film that he is in, and and also the scar of and also the scar of his time in the sixties, and that is. Shere Khan. He of co he was of course loosely based off of the original character from the original Jungle Book novels, which were originally written in 1894 by Sir Rudyard Kipling himself. He, of course, first appeared in the classic 1967 Disney animated adaptation of the story, and he was animated by Nine Old Men member uh, Milt Carl. He was also originally voiced by stage and screen actor George Sanders, and was voiced in the 2003 sequel, The Jungle Book 2, by Tony Jai. Now, for those of you who haven't read the original Jungle Book novel, or have never, ever, ever, ever seen the Disney version in their lives, for goodness knows why, um, Shere Khan is basically an Indian Bengal tiger who, who naturally has a deep hatred for humans and only fears two things, being man's gun and man's fire which subsequently drives his sole motivation throughout the stories to kill the man-cub known as Mowgli out of fear that the boy would eventually grow up to become a man and possibly hunt him down with a gun. So, what are my thoughts on Shere Khan? Um, even though in the original film, we don't get to physically see Shere Khan until the last third of the movie, about 
uh, 50 minutes in. I thought it was just awesome that there was so much, that there was so much build up throughout the film, um, throughout the film of sheer, throughout the film concerning sheer calm to be this really fearsome and and quite deadly creature who would send a chill up the spines of every single animal that inhabits the jungle and and really and we also get a, and we, and how much he hates man with a burning passion which would be quite, which is quite understandable because, because by the time, because around the time the, around the time the original, um, stories were written, um, stories were being written, tigers, tigers were being, tigers were being hunted, and um, basically, um, Indian tigers were basically hunted um, um, every day, and um, basically hunted every day. Um, anyways, um, uh, throughout the film, you could clearly tell from the reactions of most of the characters of most of the characters like um like Baloo and Bagheera etc etc um just just really how affected they are by his presence in the jungle which is almost like a dark shadow looming up behind them wherever they go um, Shere Khan obviously relishes the fact that he knows everyone in the jungle fears him, and he thinks very, very highly of himself, which leads to him developing a truly arrogant, um, a truly, truly arrogant, truly boastful, and a truly quite egotistical personality which which in the end also leads to his own to his downfall that I'm going to get into uh, later on in the review um, he also like Maleficent is very sophisticated and graceful in the way that he presents himself. He is also quite physically sturdy as um as opposed to his as opposed to his original lameness in the um um in the original novel. And he is also, and he's also quite suave, and almost behaves kind of like, kind of like an a typical English gentleman when he, um, and he can also behave almost like um, a typical English gentleman when he wants to, but, but when he, but when, but, but, but when he. But when he gets angry or somebody um, annoys him, he could become incredibly dangerous and and just quite unpredictable, which which I have to say makes him quite freaking scary as as sin. I mean, I mean. Quite, makes him quite freaking scary as sin, which I, which I think Capaldi, which I think is what Capaldi's doctor is going to be like in the, going to be like when his, when his era starts on August 23rd, um, anyway, and also, and, um, and George and um, and Shere Khan even commands attention and res 
expect every time he is on screen. Um, I also have to say that that for the original Jungle Book, George Sanders was undoubtedly the perfect choice to voice Shere Khan. Um, given that Sanders did have previous experience playing these sort of, you know, gentlemanly, you know, villain roles for Hollywood. Likewise with, um, likewise with Christopher Lee and Alan Rickman, actually. And, um, oh, and Benedict Cumberbatch, um, occasion, quite occasionally. Um, um, anyway, such as the, such as his role in the 1940 Alfred Hitchcock film, Rebecca, um, where he, where, um, but he was more, where he portrayed more, um, the title character's lover rather than the actual villain, and, um, and especially his role opposite Betty Davis in All About Eve. And, and, and he even portrayed the first of three incarnations of Mr. Freeze in the Adam West Batman TV show the previous year, which, um, which of course was 1966. Um, uh, what I also love about Shere Khan is, is how much of a ruthless badass he is, and, and how he pretty, and how he pretty much knows he is not going to be uh, stupid and fall for, for anyone's lies, which, lies, which, which leads me, which leads me which leads me to strangely think that he would that he would seriously own Scar if there was going to be a battle between the two characters. And um, the best example of this is when he, is the scene where he interrogates Carr on the whereabouts of Mowgli, and he's having him. Um, by the claws, and um, and he's having him by the claws and searching through his coils, which causes Carr to act strangely and even attempt to hypnotize him, which of course doesn't work because Shere Khan, for some reason, that has that wasn't that hasn't been. For some reason, for some unexplained reason, seems to be somehow immune to to Carr's hip to this hypnosis, either because either because Carr and either because they both met before, or because um, Shere Khan is more intelligent than that. I don't know. Um, nobody knows. I don't know anyway. Um, he is also quite weird. Um, he is also weirdly quite sympathetic towards his victims. Um, for example, calling Mowgli a helpless little lad which kind of adds to the scariness of his character, really. Sorry. Um, speaking of, um, and in fact, from a, and in, and in fact, as a child, um, Shere Khan used to really scare me as a child. I mean, not quite literally scared. I wasn't quite literally um, scared of him, but I did feel like a little chill up my spine when every, whenever he was on screen. And that is, and that is quite briefly from a childhood perspective. 
Um, speaking of scariness, the scariest part is towards the end of the film when when Shere Khan basically dares the otherwise um, dares um, the otherwise courageous but foolish Mowgli to run away from him by saying, "Now I'm going to close my eyes and count to ten. It makes the chase more interesting for me before he begins the suspenseful countdown. At, at that moment, you just instantly think to yourself, Oh, shit. This big cat... This big cat is, he isn't fucking around, you know? He actually means serious business. And you are desperately rooting for Mowgli to just get out of this dangerous situation. Uh, this, of course, leads to probably one of the most suspenseful uh, fun entertaining and enjoyable climaxes to ever come out of the Disney history books as Baloo tries to protect Mowgli by holding on to Shere Khan's tail, which leads to Shere Khan nearly killing Baloo, which then leads to the Beatlesque vultures taking which then leads to the vultures that look like the beetles taking the piss out of Shere Khan in order to distract him, which then ultimately leads to his greatest humiliation as Mowgli ties a burning branch to Shere Khan's tail, causing him to run off into the distance. Now, I can see where they were trying to go with this. I mean, they didn't want to, they obviously didn't want to kill off Khan, which, which is fine by me. And, and of course they at least wanted to visually show to the audience um, how Khan's obvious pyrophobia. Um, pyrophobia and I know and I know some people and I know a few people have criticized um, um, have criticized Shere Khan's defeat as being um, a bit of a letdown and and quite underwhelming um, personally I didn't I didn't mind the way he was defeated to be honest. I thought it was I thought it was um I thought it was I thought it was decent. I thought it was a decent way for him to go. I thought it was a I thought it was a decent way for him to go. Um of course I of course I I of course I could have expected um um um, a much better defeat. I mean, having, I mean, having Mowgli, um, you know, just chase Khan off by waving, by waving the burning branch, by waving the burning branch in front of his face, and having, and and therefore chasing him off. But, um, but, um, but as it is, but as it was. But the defeat as it is, I didn't quite mind it. Again, I thought it would. Again, without repeating myself, I thought it was. I thought it was a decent way for him to to go. Now on to um. Now on to. Now on to ranting a little bit about his appearance in the. In the 2003, um, in the 2003 sequel, 
the Jungle Book 2. Um, basically, in that film, he has the same motivation as in the as in the original film is that he wants to kill Mowgli and blah 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 but um but this time but this time it's out of revenge for his humiliation at the at the end of the original film um now now, Tony J, who, um, who Disney fans might know anyway, voiced Frollo in Hunchback of Notre Dame. Um, I have to admit that he did do a very convincing job of vocally impersonating George Sanders through his, uh, performance. Um... But I thought the character, but I thought the character was just unfortunate, but unfortunately I thought his character was just, was just ruined and, and just run down to the ground by the writing and, and was just reduced to being um, an empty, really an empty shell of what he was in the original. I mean, he wasn't as, th I mean, he wasn't as, he wasn't as threatening as he was in the original, I thought, which, which is very disappointing, actually. Um, and what's even worse is, and what's even worse is that Disney Toons actually um, planned a um, a third in actually planned to make a third instalment of of this franchise just in case a uh, Jungle Book two made enough money at the box office. And in and in the proposed Jungle Book three, this is rich. Um, Shere Khan was supposed to have escaped from the from the from the Tiger Head statue that he was trapped in um, at the at the end of at the end of um of the first sequel i mean at the begin um he was to have escaped from that statue at the beginning of that mo of the movie and he was going to end up being captured alongside a uh, below and forced into kind of a circus environment like what like with um Likewise, with um, with Madagascar, th Madagascar three, for example, um, and it gets better still. They were going to actually rape this character even more than they than they than they already did in the first sequel by having him by having him getting to come to terms with his actions in the, from the previous two films acknowledge his acknowledge them and intend to to and intend to change his ways uh, and intend to change his ways and become a good guy as Mowgli and the other animals really attempt to rescue them. Oh my fucking god, that sounds terrible. That, uh... That sounds almost as bad as making... as making Michael Myers cry, um... Um, at the end of Halloween Five, it it sounds it sounds almost as 
bad as having Martin turn out to be the bad guy in Secret of Nim 2. And, and heck, it sounds just as bad as, as having the Doctor who died at the beginning of Series 6 turn out to be the fucking test selector. And I had to bring that up. God. And no, no, almost as bad as almost as bad as turning the Daleks multicolored in Victory of the Daleks. Ah <sighs> Oh my god. Um Luckily the Jungle Book 2 did Luckily, The Jungle Book 2 didn't make enough money for, for this to happen and, and plans for this and plans for this third instalment were subsequently scrapped. Thank fucking God. Um. Um. Now, my overall conclusion is this. Um, despite the way he was needlessly um, underused um, in the sequel, and because of the fantastic voice work by... And, and because of the fantastic voice work by both George Sanders and Tony Jay, um, as well as Milt Carl's brilliant animation of the character, I think some of the best animation that man had ever done. Um, Shia Khan is just Shia Khan is an awesome tacular yet underrated villain. And thus, my rating for Shere Khan is going to, quite honestly, be, be a 9 out of 10. Now, feel free to leave a comment in the section below and let me know your thoughts on Shere Khan and also what you'd rate him out of 10. Plus, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I also want to announce that to that to celebrate my one to announce in advance that to celebrate my one year anniversary on YouTube on Thursday, the seventh of August, twenty fourteen. I have plans to do a special review of one of my favourite comedy movies. What that may be, it's spoilers for now, but the only other clue I could possibly give is that it stars one of my favourite movie comedians of all time. And that is the one and only Jim Carrey. And that's all I'm going to say on that subject. Anyway, my next Disney villain character review is going to be of everyone's favourite good-looking asshole from Beauty and the Beast, Gaston. Until then, do take care, everyone, and and goodbye. And in the and in the words of Shere Khan himself, bravo, bravo, an extraordinary performance.